Today we're going to be doing the timing belt and water pump and belts as well on these first gen Honda CRVs. Same thing with if you got a Honda or Integra with a B20 block in it. Similar thing, similar on all B series. Uh, I got the car jacked up here. If you got a CRV, I normally lift on the where the lower control arm pocket is right there. That's a subframe. And I don't put the jack on the pinch weld, I put it on the square part right here of the unibody. So nice and steady. And I also keep the jack just kissed there just in case this one's, if this slips or whatever. But starting here, this is where I like to start. We're gonna be taking off the crank pulley first. We're gonna be taking off the splash shield. I'll show you how to do that. But I say start here because this is the number one hang up spot when doing a timing belt and one of the harder things to get done. So I'll show you how to do that. I right, guess so with the cover off the splash shield, we had just two uh, plastic clips here. They just came, well this one had a 10 mil and a little plastic thing. This one just had a popper thing. Peel this back down. There should be another clip. That one was missing. But anyways, here we are at the crank pulley. That's a 19 mil socket, 19 mil hex bolt, I should say. So we're going to get our strong impact half inch gun and take this out. Okay, so see how it came out perfectly this time? We're going to thread this back in. We're not taking that off until a little bit later. But I like starting here because this will hang you up if this bolt seized. And you can try a different day or get a shop to impact impact it out for you. So we're going to leave that right there where it is. Just so I threaded the bolt in there for the time being. Um, if you don't have access to an impact or if you have like an electric one like that, that won't do it. But go down to a shop or whatever, bring a six pack, pay the dude some beer. White people always work for beer. So they should be able to take that off for you. And then you and then tell them just to snug it down by hand when you get home just bust it off with a hand impact or a ratchet or whatever you got there next we're going to be draining the coolant because we're doing the water pump the water pumps driven off the timing belt if you look through this cover that we have here we'll have a drain hole and then the little valve here so we're going to just grab a little needle nose pliers crack that loose and then we're going to wind it out by hand let that drip out we're going to collect it and then remember to tighten it back up when you're finished. Okay, so while that's draining, what we're going to do is we're going to take off the spark plug wires and then we're going to take off the valve cover because the valve cover has got to come off to get to the uh, plastic covers. So we might have to take this old guy off, this guy off. I'm going to disconnect the battery as well, which I did. So yeah, we'll start doing that. So once you get the uh, tendrils off, these little crush washer things right here, they'll just pop up, use a pick up and there'll be a rubber insert in there as well so we'll take that one off there as well so do that for all of them and then we're going to pry the valve cover up slightly got the valve cover bolts off this power steering bracket was kind of in the way here so we have to take off this 14 millimeter so that gives us access to the valve cover as you see it's already pulling up take off that uh, pcb hose too you should sometimes you might have to pry this looks like the guy before me did the valve cover and we can see our timing belt so we can see that it's starting to wear because you can see the little zebra stripes going on to it i also see that it's got some wear right focusy shit right there it's starting to chew up a little bit so good time to do it now i'm going to put a piece of plastic or poly over this just to keep any dirt and debris out here because we're working in a dirty shop and then after we're going to start uh next step after that would be start taking off our belts but let me just wrap that up and then also our coolant should be finished draining so remember to tighten that bolt up there so we're going to be taking off for power steering. You might have to lift this. Uh, this reservoir just slides up if you need some extra room. But uh, we're taking off the, I think that's probably top 12 mil. And then you'll see a bottom for, and you'll see the bottom 14 millimeter right, uh, 14 mil right there. So you see how it's slotted. That's going to be where we're tensioning our belt. So you could index that position so you got a rough idea. Or you could check the tension on the belt so you got a rough idea when you go to put it back the new belts back on what uh, tension you want the belt to be uh, so before I took the power steering off there the two bolts are two 12 mils I forgot to uh, take off the um, cruise control we'll have two 10 mils here and then one 10 mil down here you just got to loosen that one up you don't got to take it fully we're gonna bungee cord this up and out of the way and we're going to probably do the same with our power steering. Remember to slide the reservoir up. I'm going to put this camera down and I'm going to bungee cord that up out of the way. So for the AC belt, I took it out here, but I'll show you what uh, you have to do in the way. have to do to get it out. There's this little guy right here. 
This is uh, for the tensioner. You gotta take a 12 mil. I had to use a wrench because the belt totally blocks that way there. So use a 12 mil. And then once it comes to the tensioner, this long thing, you gotta remove this jam nut, which is a 12 millimeter deep. And then this one, then you gotta unscrew the threaded rod just a little bit right here. This, I believe it's smaller than eight mil. I think it might be a seven mil. Once you unscrew that, you'll see that this, uh, that's got a dent in it. Well, you'll notice that this starts slowly uh, loosening up and then loosening tension in on it. When you get your belt, make sure you mark it because they're all about the same size here, but uh, you'll notice that the belt is, mark your belt like I was saying, you'll notice that the belt is unable to get out of here because this torque mount's in the way. So with this torque mount, you're going to be taking off the two 14 millimeters and you're able to slip the belt out. Uh, the ultra alternator belt, on the other hand, isn't too bad. You're going to have a, see the alternator, you'll have this 12 millimeter nut, 12 or 14, everything 12 or 14, don't quote me. You're just going to back that out a couple of turns, then, then spray, spray that with lube too because it's going to be sliding there. Then underneath, you're going to have a alternator nut, that bottom one right there, that one's a 14. So you're going to back that one out a little bit and spray that with WD-40 and you're going to rock the alternator and that's going to, this. just make sure you don't pry on it and bend it, but you're going to rock that alternator just enough to get it to start moving and then once it's loosened this way all the way, then you're able to pull that belt out. So that belt's out, we'll label that. The other one's off, we'll label that. We'll drop the torque mount and get all the bolts out of there. Okay, so my mount, uh, I left it down. My mount is completely broken, so I had to source a new one. Okay, that's the best I could get that camera. We're gonna be taking off a crank pulley. There is a key underneath here, a woodruff key, a small piece of metal, so don't lose that. So you don't lose it. Um, it should just take a little bit of wiggling and should come out. You don't need any special pullers, pull Honda ones, because this key will keep it. And I lost the key. Remember how I said don't lose the key? Surprise, bitch, I lost the key. So I'll show you what the key's supposed to look like. You see how it's all round and it's got that one uh, square antler right there? It's just a square piece of metal. And mine was right there and I have no idea where I dropped it. Okay, I gotta go find it. So the timing cover's off. This one is the one uh, I did off camera. The top cover will have two of these long 10 bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. Once that's off, you'll have the lower cover. You can identify these bolts because they have this little bit of a lip on them there. So you got one, two, three, four, five. This one's recessed, so you gotta look for it or feel it. This one right here I got from up top. This one's a pain. There's a crank sensor wiring that has a bracket. Make sure that bracket gets connected when you go to re-put it back in or else that wire has a chance of getting tangled in the belt and you don't want that. So. With that said, we can uh, move to indexing our timing. Over a crank to line up our timing belt, we're going to be using the OEM crank pulley. I'm going to put some washers here that'll help me out. If not, you don't need it, but it saves the time where you can put like a spacer by just using a nut that's big enough. But thread this back in the crank pulley, and then we can put a 19 mil wrench on here, spin it over until our lines line up. Forgot to add, forgot to add this little crank sling called slinger, but it's a uh, will protect the plastic from ra the plastic timing cover from rubbing up against the belt making noise so that's this is important to put back on here so make sure that what I'll do is I'll put it here so I know before my crank pull I know that's got to get put on I shall put it with my bolts that's going to go on this is how I do my timing belts I like to label everything so what I do is I write top just because when you trans what I'm gonna do is we're gonna be transferring our paint marks to our new belt. That means it's uh, pretty much idiot way proof to get this done. So when you put it back on, it's gonna line up perfectly. On your TDC marks, the sprocket will say up. Um, I'll show you out here. And then this one will say up. Line those ones just so they're roughly up. Those ones don't matter. But right here on the exhaust cam at three o'clock, and on the sorry, and then on the intake cam at nine o'clock you'll see two indentations two lines so I'll put two lines just to highlight that and these two lines are just made up lines i made up so on my made up lines stripe it across the belt stripe across the belt so it'll be on the teeth to the groove then the teeth to the groove of the belt to right top top so we have two marks up top 
And these just show our timing belt indication. And on the bottom here, our TDC, our timing belt indication, there's a red dot on the block and a red dot up here. So that's our, we don't, I just marked that to show where TDC is. On this one, when we're marking the belt, I just pick two spots where I want to go from the belt to the groove and then the belt to the groove here. So two little opposite spots and then index that to your block. Let the paint dry, take off the belt, and when you take your water pump off, it's going to spray water everywhere. So make sure that the paint's nice and dry, and then you could probably retouch it up after. But I like where the belt is, so I'm going to take off the tensioner. You just got to loosen that bolt right there, then it'll spring out, and then we could slide our belt completely off. All right, so you see we got our belt off. Our cam's moved, which is expected. But uh, our belt is off. As you see, we can't pull it out because the mount is in the way. So what you do is you take your jack, put a little piece of plywood on it or whatever, and that's going to hold it in place. And you can take off the one, two, three bolts and pull that bracket out to get your belt out. Okay, so we got to that one right there is a water pump. We got to all the water pump bolts. They're all different lengths too, so make sure you... Uh, Put them back in the jig here so we got there's a lot of holes and areas and emboss bins here but there's just one two three four five holes and you guys want to pause that or whatever get a rough idea of length right they're all different lengths too so with that off we'll put a catcher underneath it grab your biggest pry bar let's see if i actually do this i'll throw my jacks right in the way that's freaking smart just close enough. So I'm gonna let that drain out for a while and uh yeah, we'll get back to it. Okay, I gotta work quick. I just put a thin thin smear, put the gasket on there and put a thin smear everywhere, both sides of the o-ring and then on the face. So I gotta put this in and then I made my bolts on a little antler thing there, so sweet. Okay, so water pump is in and tighten those five bolts evenly um, If there's a torque spec, I'll throw you guys a torque spec. I don't believe in torque specs, but we'll throw on the torque spec there for you guys um, the Next step is a belt Make sure you're right top on it and then count the right directions and physically count the teeth between um, Between them so I had 13 up between top and then 46 or whatever it'll be different for everybody's depends where you put your marks, but Make sure that's done, count them, don't just overlay some and transfer the marks. Count every teeth between everything, that way you're guaranteed to not skip timing. Because if you skip timing, you'll break your engine. Um, when you throw your belt on, remember just line up your, get focused on lining up your uh, your belt marks to the uh, the cam gears that you make and ignore the TDC marks for the time being. Just, ignore, uh, just uh, line your belt up to your OEM marks or those marks that you made. And then when we spin the engine over twice to verify that it is correct, then we'll be looking at the OEM marks, but just do our paint marks for now. Um, if our cams are a little bit forward, that's okay. So when we slip our belt on, if it's half a tooth off, we'll just turn it or, and then line our paint marks up. But that's what we're going to be focusing on. It's a little bit hard to explain, uh, a little hard to show, but I'll get it on there and I'll show you guys. All right, guys, so what I did is I lined up the bottom. So you see my paint marks, paint marks, the belt to the gear then up top i got this one lined up and then i put a zip tie this one right here i had to have one person just turn this with a uh, ratchet one of these just slowly pull it back then i was able just to stretch that belt over and that's all good the tension is going we gotta still tighten up the tensioner but i got it tensioner in the loose position so we're gonna tighten that up, make sure we've got some tightness on the belt, but not too tight or else it'll squeal and start wearing bearings and other shit. But we're gonna tighten up the tensioner, get that a set up. I'm gonna do that off camera just because I got zero space right now. So I got the tensioner all tight on the bottom. I was doing, I was using a little pick right where my finger is. It's probably not gonna focus, but right, see where that spring is? Kind of wanna push it up that way and it'll bring some tension on the on the belt, then lock it down on the center with that 12 mil. Um, going over our lines, our lines are all good on where the belt meets the clogs. 
So now that we're happy with it, make sure the tensure is double tight. Then we're going to spin the engine twice. So these guys are going to the crank twice. So just say one revolution of the cam gears to where this these guys are facing forward and these guys are facing sideways here. Our belt is no longer going to line up with these marks here. So we're going to be using the OEM marks here. So our belts marks are the ones that we made up. Now we're going to just double check it just to make sure that the OEM marks line up. Running over the engine twice so you notice our belts our paint marks aren't going to line up because those ones are off the cogs. We're going to be lining up the OEM marks like I've said a couple of times so these ones right here line up perfectly. Then on the bottom you remember that the 12 o'clock on the crank here here lines up with the red dot that's on the block which is hard to see but it does. So this engine is 100% timed correctly. Now we can go and slap all our covers on. Don't forget the this guy. I'm telling you guys a couple of times because I'm known to forget this guy but remember to put it on before before the plastic cover gets put on. Okay, valve cover is back on. Remember, put back your cruise control. Tighten your belts. Don't forget this ground. On uh, when you're putting the gasket on, you should probably get a new one. I reuse my old one, but uh, make sure you put <clears throat> make sure you put a dab of RTV silicone in these cam cap corners. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just where those corners of those moons are. Uh, I would have showed you guys, but I was just gunning this thing back. So. Um, just adding in coolant right now. We'll have to bleed it later once on the ground. Got the tire on. I'm gonna drop it on the ground and then we're uh, Gonna try firing it up and cross our fingers. It won't explode on us. There we go. We got it running. Bleeding the coolant. Fires up running nice and quiet. The engine hasn't ran in a little bit. So it's got a little bit of a tick that comes and goes up top. But overall, she meant 